The entire time that I was in foster care, I was in uh, group homes. What I call a warehouse type of group home, there were, you know, 30, 30 plus kids and there was, there's no real opportunity to build bonds or relationships or there's not really an opportunity to be a kid really. I finally went to Open Gate Ranch. It's a couple that runs the group home, Becky and Craig Barris. And they, they really do run it like a family. It's, for me it was, it felt like going home. I had just graduated high school and was planning, you know, the next step of my life, what I wanted to do. My dad, he called my mom and, you know, just sort of out of the blue and said, I think we need to adopt Eric. And uh, they, so they, they talked about it and, uh, for a few days and then, um, you know, called me up in the living room and, and said they had something to, to talk to me about. And I, I figured I was in trouble or something. But uh, they, they asked me what I thought about uh, being adopted. And as soon as they asked me, I was just like, of course. I felt very honored that they would, you know, want to adopt me. And uh, it's um, fantastic. We as foster youth interns are, you know, sort of success stories uh, from the foster care system. And there are many, many of our peers who, who are not. And so it's our job, it's my job to advocate on their behalf. You have these young adults coming from across the United States and we, we gain these experiences, we learn from each other, we learn from the staff at CCAI and the, the real difference comes when we go back out. For me, I worked with the Senate Finance Committee and was able to sort of frame best practices for, um, for foster care and, and in my experience specifically for group home reform. You know, that you can throw out all these numbers that there's this many kids in foster care and this many age out and this and that, but it really is about the individuals, the people that I worked with cared about me as an individual and cared about my story and my insight. For me, that has been monumental. I've been able to use my experience and my voice in affecting change for foster care. The knowledge that we've gained, the the people that we've been able to network with, we can use them as resources and allies. Even though I'm you know, 2,000 miles away in Montana, I can still call on people here and, and use those, those resources to help people across the nation. Family is important to me because they're the people that you rely on. They're the people that are going to help you through thick and thin. So family is, is the most important thing. Well, you just saw that video about me, so I, don't, I, don't, I think I can go sit down now. You're, you're familiar with that. Um, I first entered foster care when I was 14 years old. I was placed in group homes the entire time because I was an undesirable teenager, teenage male. The first two group homes I went into were little more than warehouses for children. They were cold, overcrowded, and unwelcoming. However, when I was 16 years old, I was placed at Open Gate Ranch and welcomed with open arms. I had a place to call home and people to call family. You see, the amazing couple that run Open Gate Ranch, Craig and Becky Barris, ended up adopting me as an adult when I was 18 years old. I need you all to understand this does not happen for most teenage boys in foster care. Not to mention the fact that children virtually never get adopted from group homes. But Craig and Becky have adopted a total of six boys, giving us all a forever family. <clears throat> My adoptive parents have been have been a large influence in my life and have guided me to help others who are currently in foster care. They've taught me what it means to be a part of a family. For the first time, I felt like I had a mother and I had a father that loved and cared about me and I was their son.
Thank you. <clears throat> they taught by example how to give and receive love and how families are always there for each other through thick and thin. <clears throat> Some people say that, that blood is thicker than water. Though this may be somewhat true, my parents do not abide by that at all. They take boys into their home from all across the state of Montana and give them a safe refuge as well as unabashed love. Children, even teenage boys, need adoption to feel that love and that permanency. That is a big reason why I applied to the Foster Youth Internship Program here in DC this past summer. I've always wanted to work in an area, in an arena where I could affect change. CCAI and their internship gave me that opportunity. I was able to work with the Senate Finance Committee as they considered group home reform. This was a fortuitous placement because much of my experience in foster care was in group homes. As a foster youth intern, I was able to learn so much about how I can help children who are still in foster care and are hoping to find their own forever families. The Congressional Coalition on Adoption Institute gave me the opportunity to, to share my story and use it to hopefully impact members of Congress and by extension, kids in foster care across the country. Tonight, oh, yeah. Tonight, we celebrate those who step forward to provide children and youth with lo and youth loving families. They are truly terrestrial angels. My parents gave me the gift of a family as well as a chance at a bright future. Things I didn't have growing up and didn't even think were attainable. Being part of a family was something I'd, I had always hoped for, but never thought was possible for me to have. I honestly was not sure that I was worthy of such a beautiful gift. I am so grateful for this opportunity that I have been given to be here and speak to you about the importance of fostering and adopting children and youth. It is cliche, but children are the future, and if we are failing them now, then how can we expect them to succeed in the future? If they are not granted normalcy as a child, how can they be expected to be normal adults? My dad has always pushed me to do my best and, and try new things to expand my horizons. I cannot imagine being here in our nation's capital to be a voice and representative for children in foster care if it were not for my father always pushing me out of my comfort zone and to strive for success. My dad and mom have my dad and mom have helped to make me that man that I am today. And for that, I will be forever grateful and forever in their debt. Thank you. Well, Eric, I'm, I'm here representing the Senate family as the co-chairman of the Senate uh, Adoption Caucus with Amy Klobuchar. We're certainly proud to have you this summer. I'm pleased that we've been able to have foster interns now for three years in our office. All of them have a great story to tell. None of those stories are better than your chance to look at what you did, what you lived through, lived with, and come back and make a difference uh, there. You know, there's, maybe it's because I was setting by Rachel Crow, but uh, you mentioned blood is thicker than water. There's another, there's a great song, blood is thicker than water, uh, but love is thicker than blood. And as I was thinking about you talking about your parents, I thought that's so appropriate. You know, I have an adopted son and I'm so proud of him, so impressed by everything he is able to do. I truly admire what he's been able to do. I know your mom and dad think the same thing. And frankly, Eric, there's probably nobody better than your dad to express that to you. And as a surprise to you, your dad is here tonight. And uh, so, Craig.
it's an honor to be here tonight. Um, as Eric knows, my biggest fear in the world is speaking in front of people. And he talked about comfort zones, and this is my least comfortable zone ever. <laughs> um, but as far as being proud of him, I think that goes without saying because I'm here. But, you know, he's an amazing young man. Know where I get the tears from. <laughs> <laughs> and we really feel blessed, his mom and I, that, that he has made the choices in his life and done the things that he needed to do to be standing here before you today. Um, I can still remember the little boy that came into my house at the age of 16 that wouldn't look you in the face and you look at him now and he's definitely become a man of his own. And I was also asked to speak a little bit about my experience with adoption. Uh, I was adopted as a, a child and grew up in an adoptive home. My wife was uh, in foster care when she was a child. We uh, both learned through that what a family should look like and could be and have tried to take that to a new level and have <clears throat> run a small boys home for the last 20 years. And out of that we have, I have six adopted children and or I have eight adopted children and she has six. And I gotta say that this is probably one of the, the best moments that I've had. And he really makes me proud to be his dad. And thank you.